praise today. That, oh God, that uh, you endured that cross. You were obedient even unto the death of the cross. And even while uh, we do not understand how uh, these uh, wicked and cruel uh, persons could have done that and we were part of that as well lord we are glad that you took that punishment that shame endured oh god the crucifixion so that we might be saved and this morning i thank you for all that has gone on before and now we have come to hear from your word i pray that you will challenge us and encourage us in jesus name Amen and Amen. So get your Bibles out. Turn in the New Testament to the book of Matthew. Hallelujah. And in the message today, in this morning's message, I would like to call on us all to make a commitment in three areas of our lives. Amen. Amen. Commitment. This is the message for today. Amen. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 32. I will look at several scriptures. Amen. Each point will have a separate text. Hallelujah. A separate scripture. So keep your Bibles out and open. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, glory to God. Matthew chapter 27. And uh, verse 32 it says, And as they were going out, they found a man from Cyrene named Simon, whom they forced, somebody say forced, whom they compelled to bear or carry the cross of Jesus. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about the identity of Simon except to say that he amen, came from a city called Cyrene, which I believe is in North Africa. He is, I believe, um, on a pilgrimage here during the Passover time and so the Bible says the same day that Jesus was being crucified in fact they were taking him up to Golgotha's hill to crucify him it just happened that he was passing by that same time amen, amen, amen. now talk about being in the right place at the wrong time or is it the other way around but he was on spot. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says that they forced. The soldiers had to force Simon to carry the cross. Amen. I want to ask this morning. Was he reluctant? And if he was, why? Amen. Why did they have to compel him? Why did they have to not merely ask, but force him to carry the cross of Christ? Why was he reluctant? Well, there may be two, four, three or four things that I'd like to say real quickly. Hallelujah. One, I believe that he may have been reluctant to carry the cross of Jesus because it was an unclean task. Or assignment. Amen. 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 The cross now is drenched with blood Amen. and other bodily fluids Amen. that would have um, been excreted or expelled from the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Secondly, I believe that it was a difficult task. Because this cross could have weighed no less than 300 pounds. Amen. Which I myself think that we may need three or four persons to carry. 
Now uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna use a word here, and I hope that you under you understand. It'll just mean force. Amen. Sometimes you see um, a, a, a person, a man, uh, is asked to carry a bag of cement, right? And the man can to carry this thing. <laughs> You're under stress. You're under pressure because it is heavy. And it is uh, how much? About 100 pounds? Well, times that by three. And you get an idea of what the cross, uh, the weight uh, of the cross uh, might uh, have been like, uh, like. So it would have been a huge and heavy load for one single man to carry. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Thirdly, I believe uh, that this task was uh, an embarrassing uh, task. Uh, amen. Because only criminals, uh, condemned criminals, uh, hallelujah, condemned to death uh, were, were to carry a cross. Uh, and so it was a sign of mockery. Hallelujah. Fourthly, I believe that this was an inconvenient task. Uh, because Simon really wanted to have nothing to do with this ugly and gruesome incident. Amen. Because he was here on a pilgrimage. Amen. So, what are the implications? The implications is this. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23 tells us. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to be my follower, if anyone comes after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me daily. Hallelujah. So Simon of Cyrene, Shows us, uh, hallelujah, shows us uh, that we cannot uh, be uh, Jesus' disciples uh, unless we are willing uh, to step out uh, of uh, our comfort zone. Amen. Unless we are willing, uh, hallelujah, to take up uh, the assignment, uh, to do uh, the dirty uh, and unclean work, uh, to do uh, the difficult, uh, undertake uh, the difficult. Uh, uh, um, task. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes uh, embarrassing uh, task. Uh, sometimes uh, an in inconvenient uh, task. Uh, not always uh, at the time that we want it uh, or where we want it uh, or how we want to do it. Uh, amen. Uh, it tells us, uh, hallelujah, that if any one of us, uh, you, uh, me, uh, those downstairs, uh, any one of us uh, will follow the Lord. Lord, if any will be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, he must take up the cross daily and be a follower. Amen. I say amen, my dear friend. Hallelujah. Let not the dirty work or the dirtiness, uncleanness, not all of the work, amen, is office. Not all of the work is desk. Not all of the work is jacket and tie. There are times you have to dirty your hands out there, hallelujah, in the mission field. There are times you have to set up, hallelujah, PA system. There are times you have to put out your Hallelujah. You might perspire, you might sweat, but it is for the glory and the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, my dear friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes the task will become difficult. Amen. Too much for one man to bear. Too much for one person. Amen. To carry. Hallelujah. But he says, if any man will follow after me, let him take up his cross and let him follow up to me. Amen. Hallelujah. It might be an embarrassing task. Hallelujah. Because my friend, amen, it may not always be, hallelujah, suiting, suiting, suitable, hallelujah, amen, and favorable before friends and rich folks, hallelujah, amen, but I'm saying, my dear friend, amen, it is a task, if it is to 
bring glory for God. We must do it. Amen. Take up the cross and follow. Amen. And then again, my dear friend, it might not always be to our convenience. One king said to Paul, he said, go your way. I will hear you at a more convenient time. I don't think that man ever got saved. Hallelujah. Well, because Paul was preaching the gospel to him. But dear friend, I want to say, friend, hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. We cannot serve God at our convenience. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, yes, we cannot marginalize the work and the task that we have to do. Amen. And that we must. Hallelujah. Yeah. But we must be able to find time. We must be able to make the time. Hallelujah. Because, dear friend, I tell you, if a sickness or if a disease or some calamity hits your home, it forces things up. Well, they, they have a way of forcing things upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. It may not be convenient. Amen. But it is forced upon you. And if that can happen in the natural, I ask you the question, why can't we serve God? Hallelujah. When things are not going well as well. Hallelujah. Think about it. Let it not only be to our convenience. Hallelujah. But let it be to the glory and the honor of God. Make the effort. Hallelujah. Take time out for Jesus. He took time for you. Amen. Sometimes you might be in a hurry with so many things to do. But don't you forget about Jesus. He took time out for you. Hallelujah. Yes, he took the time to die on the cross so that you and me, your souls, wouldn't be lost. So if you find yourself slipping with nothing to do. Amen. Take time out for Jesus. He took time out for you. Somebody say amen. That was discipleship. Now he wants us to be committed to, this, to being disciples. Then what about faithfulness? Okay, we still with Matthew 27, verses 33 and 34 now. 32, 32, just now, 33 and 34. I said, and they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. And offered Jesus wine mixed with gall to drink. But after tasting it, he would not drink it. They offered him, of course, uh, he's thirsty. Hallelujah. He's losing pints of, and pints of blood. Remember that he's shedding his blood for you and me. Amen. I assume that it is hot. It is coaching. And he's thirsty. In fact, one of the last seven sayings, he said, I thirst. And they offered him a sponge dip in wine mixed with gall. What is this gall? This gall really was an animal secretion that was used as a painkiller in Jesus' day. Maybe they didn't have painkillers like we have today. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Hallelujah. But certainly this drink would have been absorbed each easier into the system and it should have brought some relief. Hallelujah. It was mixed with sour wine so that it can be drinkable. Now, how many of you, you don't have to show hands, but how many of you would, have, would like to be, whenever you're thirsty, to be given a shot of that? Not so much a glass, but just a shot. Just to quench your thirst. Hallelujah. Amen. Crucifixions were carried out in the public. Amen. Amen. 
And so the kind-hearted woman who will follow us of him, of his, hallelujah, amen, offered him something. And usually at public executions, you may find, you may have found some kind-hearted folk, amen, who would offer a drink to the person being executed, amen, so that that drink would not only quench the thirst, hallelujah, but it will dull the pain of the effects of the pain amen well friend i say earlier that jesus had lost a lot of blood he was thirsty hallelujah and this time it wasn't kind-hearted woman but soldiers that offered him some of this wine which amen when he had tasted it he refused to drink it why question why did he refuse to taste it or to drink it even though he had tasted it well I believe friend that Jesus came on a rescue mission and he was determined amen to complete this mission hallelujah I believe that Jesus did not want to compromise this mission hallelujah to the Lamb amen because think about this hear this and think about it he was mankind's only hope. He was mankind's only chance of redemption and salvation. He was your only hope and chance of deliverance and freedom and healing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And so glory to God. With that in mind, I believe. Amen. He said, oh, no, no, no. I am not going to compromise this thing for my son, for my daughter. Amen. I am going to carry it out. Are you hearing me? Amen. Oh yes, Jesus was committed to take our pains. Hallelujah. He was committed to carry all our sorrows. He thought that his, his pain, amen, 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 was not more important than our pain. Let me say differently. He thought that our pain was more than his little, than his huge pain that he was feeling. I believe, dear friend, hallelujah, that that pain was the pain, amen, of the sins of this world. Amen. Amen. Many of you would have heard my testimony of being healed and delivered from kidney stone. I don't have the time this morning because I'm trying to keep the time which I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, just the end, tail piece of this healing. After suffering one particular day, eight hours of agonizing pain, my body became numb. Hallelujah to the Lama. And during that period, amen, of excruciating pain, I had, I actually had a face to face meeting with the Lord. In fact, I asked him, I said, Lord, is this what you felt when you were on the cross? And anybody who suffered, hallelujah, from kidney stones, you will know the pain. Or anybody else who have ever had pains, you will know what pain is like. Well, my dear friend, amen, hallelujah, he did and send the affirmative, amen, and went on further to say it was not only your pain, but it was the pain of every kidney stone sufferer, but not only kidney stone sufferers, cancer victims, hallelujah, those that suffer with various kinds, the many 39, 49, 109 diseases and pains and aches, and the 
millions and billions of aches and pains that anyone will feel. I felt it. I carried it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I, well, you know, from that day till now, that pain has never, amen, returned, healed, amen, completely. Another time I'll share the testimony in detail. But I want you to know, hallelujah, our pain was more than his own pain. So he didn't want to numb that. He wanted to feel it. He wanted to carry it. What a God. What a Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Well, praise God. Amen. Implications. Luke chapter 9 verse 62 said, Jesus said unto them that no man who puts his hand to the plow, hallelujah, and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus showed us, hallelujah, he showed us, amen, that, amen, we must not permit external factors, hallelujah, to determine the degree, the degree or the extent of our commitment to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. You cannot change, amen, what is happening on the outside, but you can change, hallelujah, yourself. You cannot change, amen, what is happening in other people's lives. You cannot change how people talk amen and behave and whatever they do hallelujah but you can change your own self are you hearing what I'm saying my friend hallelujah amen you cannot change amen the march I mean the literal gallop that China is making throughout this world and they are here trust me they are here amen and listen friend you cannot change that but you can change you amen there are hundreds and thousands of things that is happening millions of things that has happened all around us in the world in the economy in our home in our lives that you cannot change but you can change you I can change me. How I approach, how I, my attitude, what it is I do. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. So I and you and we must not allow external forces and circumstances and situations and influences. Amen. To determine the extent of our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. And I'm coming to my third and final point. Amen. Matthew chapter 27 verse 35. So we're to 35. No, 35. Now we're going to talk about the curse. And when they had crucified him, when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes by throwing dice. Who came up with the idea of crucifixion? Surely it may have come from the bowels of hell. But the one who, the ones who may have on the earth invent, invented it, or the ones to whom the credit is given as having invented crucifixion was the Persian. In the year between 300 and 400 before Christ, BC. And while it may have been invented by the Persians, the art was de developed and mastered by the Romans. Amen. Amen. And it was used as a form of punishment for very serious crimes. Amen. 
in the process of crucifixion. A slow and agonizing death accompanied by dehydration took the victims out of this world. Victims lost blood due to much beatings and floggings as well as the shock, the shock from the pains that came upon them. I believe that the posture itself was agonizing. Think about it. You st the victim was made to stand. You didn't get in chance to sit down like in something like an electric chair. You're not even getting a chance to walk out and a trap door open and you pop your neck. This is low. It is slow. It is painful. And you have to endure this thing by hanging in an upright. Of course, upright Amen. position. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah Amen. to the Lamb. The victim had to endure this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As he would try, I suppose, to pull his arms. Amen. Amen. Or pull up his feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that he can allow a certain amount of air into yeah. into the chest area yeah. hallelujah yeah. amen and i believe that breathing would become difficult the lungs would eventually collapse amen they would become hallelujah exhausted think this was inhumane amen, sure. Sure. amen. amen. well friend sure. And this is something that I myself might be embarrassed at. But I do not understand the depiction of the artists, people who draw supposedly Jesus dying on the cross. Because usually you would see all, or at least you would imagine, some of the things that I just described. But very embarrassingly, most embarrassingly, you would see them paint a loincloth around him. Amen. 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 That was not so. Victims were crucified naked and in public. That was humiliating. That was bad. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Think about it, friend. How the crucified died. How? What really caused the death of Jesus while he was on the cross? He suffocated. There could have been an incident of cardiac arrest. Hallelujah. The loss of blood and other things. Hallelujah. That aside, what is the significance of the crucifixion? Hallelujah. Well, here, my friend, it was a symbol of God's curse because the Bible says so. Amen. Jesus, amen, on the cross, 
it was believed that he was cursed by God when, amen, Jesus for the first time called out, amen, to the Father. He referred as my God, amen. He said my, the only time recorded where he referred to God, the Father, as my God, other than my Father, amen. He said my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Hallelujah. Why I believe when the curse of God came upon Jesus. Hallelujah. The Father cannot could not stand that curse in itself. Amen. Listen, dear friend, and believe that the bodies of those crucified, they were left, hallelujah, to the birds. Amen. They were not given a burial. Hallelujah. Amen. This was also considered a curse from God. Think about it. Amen. That even now, in some cases, amen, hallelujah, Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody, uh, amen, who passed away, who has passed from the corona virus. Uh, hallelujah. If they died, uh, amen, uh, in the hospital, the family doesn't have, uh, amen, uh, doesn't have the chance, uh, amen, uh, amen, uh, to see the body or to put it away or give it a decent burial. No, sorry. Uh, amen. The state disposes of it. I don't know how they do, but it's here, but it's wherever. That is how it is always done. Amen. Well, think about it. Amen. That a person that was a, a crucified victim, a person was crucified. Amen. Wasn't given a proper burial. Hallelujah. His body was left there. Hallelujah. And the birds of the air would swoop down and eat it often time. Hallelujah. Amen. That would have been a curse. Amen. Dear friend, I believe. Hallelujah. That there were other factors, uh, hallelujah, that would have indicated time uh, does not permit me to talk about it, uh, amen. Uh, other factors that would have indicated uh, that a curse, uh, the curse of God uh, came upon Jesus, uh, hallelujah, not uh, that he deserved it, uh, hallelujah, he who knew no sin, uh, he became sin uh, so that we might be made, uh, amen, dirty, unrighteous, wicked, cussing, uh, fooling, deceit, full of worthless people like you and me uh, that we might become uh, the righteousness uh, of God uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, he took the curse. Uh, he became uh, a man uh, afflicted. Uh, he took our sins uh, upon himself. Uh, hallelujah. What we deserved uh, came upon him. Uh, what rightfully belonged to us uh, came upon him uh, so that we uh, might uh, be set free. Uh, you know what the Bible Bible says Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 says that he was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of a peace was laid upon him. Think about it. And by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Amen. He, he was made a curse. Galatians tell us that. He was made a curse. Hallelujah. With our curses. Hallelujah. So that the righteousness of God, of Abraham, my, all, 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 the, all that belong to Abraham might come upon us. Hear what I'm saying, friend. Amen. We, amen. Every man that was born of a woman except Christ was born under the curse but Jesus took that curse hallelujah and took it away from us amen hallelujah but it is not automatic it is not automatic hallelujah we have to receive it if we are to have it amen oh yes there is power in the blood of Jesus wonder walking power in the blood of the lamb I ask the question this morning have you been to Jesus for the cleansing blood? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you coming spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? If not, why not? And now is a good time for you to receive that. Hallelujah, the Lamb. Oh, my friend. And so because of him taking upon himself what belong 
rightfully to us and in exchange giving us salvation which is all inclusive hallelujah it means therefore that we are entitled to salvation we are entitled to healing we are entitled to eternal life we are entitled to deliverance we are entitled to peace we are entitled amen to blessings why because jesus took our curse upon himself and paid the price for our iniquity. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. How do we get that? All that we need to do is to surrender ourselves to his Lordship. Make him the Lord of our life. And mind you, even if you didn't make him Lord, that doesn't change who he is. He is still Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So what are you doing now? Are you doing then? He is and will always be Lord. Amen. 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 So in winding up this message, this Amen. Good Friday, Amen. next Friday will be a good one too. Amen. Amen. But you understand the context True. Amen. in the religious world. Amen. This message calls on us Amen. to make three distinct True. types Amen. of commitment. One. Amen. The commitment to discipleship. Hallelujah. Be willing Amen. to take a stand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Be willing Amen. to take a stand for Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there somebody here this morning? Amen. Is there somebody here this morning who would lift your hand and say, I'm willing to take a stand for Jesus? Well, why don't you do it right now? If you're right and say, I am willing to take a stand for Jesus. I commit myself to discipleship. Amen. Amen. I make him Lord of my life. Secondly, commitment to be faithful. Do not compromise in times of crisis. And listen, life is tough. And we will encounter many crises in our lives. Many difficult times in our lives. But when they come, don't throw Jesus out of the window. Don't rest him in the back. Take him as your savior. Hallelujah. Let Amen. him help you through Amen. every crisis. He is the Christ Amen. for every crisis. Amen. Every crisis. Amen. Amen. Be committed or, or commit yourself Amen. to be faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And thirdly, the commitment to follow Jesus. Amen. Confess him as your savior Hallelujah. and your Lord. Amen. 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 My friend, this Amen. type of commitment Amen. or the type of commitment that you may have to make might vary. It may vary from person to person, but I have presented three Amen. very important. Amen areas of our lives. Hallelujah. But maybe there are other commitments and other situations that you may be called upon wherever you are in your life. Hallelujah. Wherever you are in your life, you don't have to stay there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to stay in a position of indecision. Amen. You do not have to stay in a position or in a place not knowing where next 
things. Amen. Be Lord. definite about Lord. this thing. Amen. Know that Jesus is your Lord Amen. and your Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham, when God called Abraham, he Amen. did not know where he was going. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But he trusted the Lord Amen. all of the way. Amen. And when the time came, hallelujah, Amen. for him to have a child Amen. which God had promised that he was going to give him. Hallelujah. Amen. This man, hallelujah, Amen. was close to being a centurion. Hallelujah. Amen. In terms of age. Amen. Amen. But the Bible said that he staggered not at the promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But he was steady. He was steadfast. He hold, held on to that promise. Hallelujah. I don't know, my friend. Amen. Amen. What is your commitment? What you will need to come? Which of these three? Amen. Maybe all three. Amen. Maybe one. Maybe none. But Amen. at the same time, he's calling for a commitment. Hallelujah. Let it start Amen. with making him Lord of all lives. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Well, let's clap our hands up to the Lord this morning, Rachel. Hallelujah. Oh, God is great and great to be praised. Hallelujah. What a God. What a loving God. What a merciful Father who has sent His only begotten Son to die in our place. And He said we could live and we could live forever. And we could have the victory this morning. We give God thanks this morning. We say thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Thank you for laying down your life. Your word says, no man taketh my life from me. I lay down my life. Yes. I may pick it back up again. Oh, Hallelujah. He didn't stay dead. He rose. Father raised him back to life. I'm so a risen Lord and Savior this morning. Let's just have the hands on to you one more time. Hallelujah. He deserves the glory and praise and adoration. On Saturday morning, tomorrow at 8 30 a.m., we have uh, our lamp and light, and that's online. And then on Sunday, we gather again, resurrection morning, to celebrate uh, our Lord Jesus Christ at 7 25. Hallelujah.